Tonight, several developing stories as we come on. The miracle rescue, a little boy falling two stories into a sewer, swept into a maze of drainage pipes for nearly 13 hours. Tonight, the clues that rescue teams found and the moment they finally pulled him to safety. Massive teacher protests, tens of thousands of educators marching on state capitals, demanding higher wages and more classroom funding. Hundreds of school districts now forced to suspend classes. The market meltdown, off more than 400 points. The shock to your 401k. Did President Trump taking on Amazon help fuel today's plunge? Immigration showdown, President Trump at an Easter celebration full of children, slamming Democrats for failing to reach a deal on the Dreamers. And the new weather threat, the spring slam, record April snowfall, and now the new system we're watching. More snow plus tornadoes possible. 40 million people now in the path. And this just in, the big rig stuck on the tracks and the train unable to stop, smashing right through it. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. And good evening and welcome to World News Tonight. I'm Tom Yamas, in for David. And we begin with that miraculous rescue from a vast underground drainage system. 13-year-old Jesse Hernandez plunging 25 feet into fast-moving sewage. Crews spending nearly 13 hours searching in the dark, sending cameras down to look for him. Finally, one of those cameras, more than a half mile from where he went missing, they saw a clue and zeroed in. Tonight, Jesse's family and his rescuers on that toxic environment that could have taken the little boy's life. ABC's Whit Johnson is on the scene in Los Angeles. Tonight, the first look up close at the 25-foot hole where a boy plunged into a terrifying ordeal. 13-year-old Jesse Hernandez out celebrating Easter at a park with his family when he wandered off with friends into a restricted area and onto a maintenance vent. In seconds, he was gone. Nobody can find him. Nobody can hear him. Nobody can see him. The boy trapped in the dark in a four-foot wide pipe like this one, a current of raw sewage moving at 15 miles per hour, snaking under the city of Los Angeles. After that fall, Hernandez somehow traveling more than half a mile down a slippery, toxic tunnel. Above ground, a desperate race against time. We did not give up. But I'll be honest, we did not think we'd find a viable patient. Crews lowering special floating cameras into sewer hatches, then a clue. One of the cameras saw some handprints on the sewer, inside the sewer. Inside the pipe? Yeah. Little Jesse's family waiting all night for word. Finally, after nearly 13 hours, a miracle discovery at dawn. Inside that pipe, Jesse moving toward a small beam of light from above. And the crews loosened that maintenance hole, opened it up, and the first thing they hear is help. They could hear the boy asking for help. Help. The Department of Sanitation handed him a cell phone to call his parents. And you could just imagine the relief that they had uh, felt from hearing their son's voice. Jesse decontaminated on the scene and taken to a local hospital. What started as a family's Easter nightmare, now a remarkable story of survival. Word got back to this command post. I've never seen so much big burly men hold back tears and, and hug each other. So incredible how they found him. And Witt joins us now from the site where Jesse fell down that hole. Witt, I understand you have an update on his condition, and it looks like they're trying to secure that area just behind you where he fell in. Tom, that's exactly right. Crews have been out here adding a second layer of fencing, also doing some work up top, bolting shut that hole that Jesse Hernandez fell down. We're also learning tonight that Jesse is out of the hospital and back home with his family. Tom? That's great news. Whit Johnson with that incredible rescue tonight. Next to tens of thousands of teachers, parents, and students standing shoulder to shoulder at the Capitol in Oklahoma City today. They were demanding higher teacher pay, now among the lowest in the country, but also classroom supplies they say the schools desperately need. It's the latest in a wave of protests sweeping across the country, led by teachers who say the future of public education is at stake. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma and Kentucky tonight, the latest states joining a red state teacher rebellion. Tens of thousands of teachers and students trading classrooms for the Capitol. In Oklahoma, 70% of public schools closed. Those teachers, along with educators in West Virginia, Arizona, and Kentucky, 
are riding a growing wave of anger over deep education cuts made by Republican-led legislatures. Oklahoma teachers are demanding about $150 million to fix classrooms and buy new supplies. Duct tape on your books. Yes, duct tape all, everywhere because the page fall out. Oklahoma teacher salaries are among the worst in the nation. Teresa Mathis works four jobs. Um, I teach dance two nights a week and I clean our local theater three nights a week. Lawmakers last week approved $50 million for schools and a $6,000 raise for teachers. I hope that they can come up here and say thank you on Mendy and go back to the classrooms. But teachers say it's not enough. It's a band-aid. Now we need an actual cure because you can only stop the bleeding for so long. Clayton Sandell joins us live from Oklahoma City tonight. And Clayton, we're seeing more teachers in more states starting to protest. Is there a sense of how widespread this could become? Yeah, Tom, the next state threatening to strike is Arizona. Teachers there want a 20% pay hike. Now, the movement we have seen spread from West Virginia to Kentucky to here in Oklahoma, where many schools are already closed tomorrow in anticipation of more walkouts. Tom. Clayton Sandell and those massive teacher protests. All right, Clayton, thank you. Next from the White House, the president doubling down on his attacks on Amazon. And it comes as China is imposing new tariffs on billions of dollars worth of U.S. farm products like pork, apples, and wine, fueling fears of a growing trade war. The stock market then taking a nosedive. Take a look, losing 458 points, nearly 2%. ABC's chief business and economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, is outside the New York Stock Exchange. Tonight, stocks slammed. Since hitting a record high in January, the Dow now down 11%, meaning in the last two months, the typical $100,000 401k has wiped out approximately $10,000 in value. Behind today's drop, the tech tide turning. Amazon just today down more than 5% on the heels of a new Twitter attack. The president writing, only fools or worse are saying that our money losing post office makes money with Amazon. They lose a fortune and this will be changed. On its own website, the U.S. Postal Service says that by law, it cannot lose money on deliveries, including Amazon packages. Facebook down again in the wake of that privacy scandal, adding to the sell off fears of a trade war. China announcing new tariffs on $3 billion in U.S. goods, hitting 128 products, including pork, steel pipes, and apples. <laughs> Retaliation for the Trump administration's tariffs on steel and aluminum. The American steel aluminum industry has been ravaged by aggressive foreign trade practices. It's really an assault on our country. All right, Rebecca joins us now from outside the New York Stock Back to Amazon, Rebecca. As you reported, the president taking on Amazon over its deal with the post office, saying, quote, this will be changed. What could he mean? Well, Tom, ultimately, the Postal Service could charge Amazon more to deliver those packages. But keep in mind, package delivery is one of the few growing businesses for the Postal Service. And analysts have looked at this and believe that charging Amazon more could ultimately lead this major retailer to pursue alternative methods for its delivery service, Tom. Rebecca Jarvis for us tonight. Rebecca, thank you. Also at the White House today, an unusual mix of celebration and politics. President Trump and the First Lady appearing with the Easter Bunny at the annual Easter egg roll. But as the president mingled with the children on the White House lawn, he blasted the Democrats for immigration and for letting the dreamers down. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. The president and the Easter Bunny. Embracing his role as the host of the annual Easter egg roll, the president enjoyed a lighter moment on the South Lawn today. But even here, he had immigration on his mind. Surrounded by kids, he talked of the demise of DACA, the program to protect undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as young children. The Democrats have really let them down. They've really let them down. They had this great opportunity. The Democrats have really let them down. It's a shame. And now people are taking advantage of DACA, and that's a shame. Over the past two days, the president has blasted Democrats and Mexico for the demise of a program that he had both ended and promised to expand. 
A lot of people are coming in because they want to take advantage of DACA. This story caught our eye. The president's tirade began Sunday morning, not long after the program Fox and Friends aired this segment about a caravan of Honduran immigrants on their way through Mexico towards the U.S. border where they plan to seek asylum. Caravans coming, he tweeted, no more DACA deal. These big flows of people are all trying to take advantage of DACA. And just today, DACA is dead. But in reality, the only people eligible for legal status under DACA are those who came into the U.S. as children before June 2007. Just over a week ago, the president struck an entirely different tone. I can tell you this, and I say this to DACA recipients, that the Republicans are with you. Now, with little or no chance of congressional action, the status of some 700,000 dreamers is up in the air, pending several court cases. Democrats say it is the president who is to blame after rejecting a deal to protect dreamers in exchange for billions of dollars to build his border wall. And Ohio's Republican governor tweeted, a true leader preserves and offers hope, doesn't take hope from innocent children who call America home. Jonathan Carl joins us now, and we're learning about a possible meeting at the White House between President Trump and Vladimir Putin. The Kremlin says the president invited Putin, and the White House is reacting tonight, John? The White House won't say who extended the invitation, but they say that one possible venue for a Trump-Putin meeting would be right here at the White House. Tom? Jonathan Carl for us tonight. John, thank you. Next, the severe weather watch and the winter weather alerts across nine states tonight from Montana to Michigan. It comes after a fast-moving storm, icy roads causing this accident on I-70 in St. Charles, Missouri, and heavy snow postponing today's home opener at Yankee Stadium. Look at that. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking it all. Rob, good evening. Good evening to you, Tom. Our snowstorm this morning has quickly left, but the next April winter storm is hot on its heels. We've got winter storm warnings that are posted for much of the Midwest. This storm, a strong one coming out of the Northern Rockies, and by tomorrow morning, more snow from Minneapolis uh, back through Green Bay. A, a heavy pulse of thunderstorm, Cincinnati, Indianapolis. You got some snow last night, and that will push into the New York City area tomorrow. And a second round of thunderstorms, some of which could be strong after four to eight inch plus inches of snow across the Great Lakes. But tornadoes possible from Memphis up through Cincinnati tomorrow as well. Tom? We'll keep our eye on that weather. All right, Rob, thank you. Next to the human face of that equipment failure at an Ohio fertility clinic, three women are now suing University Hospital after the eggs they had stored there were lost. The three women, being represented by women's rights attorney Gloria Allred, are all cancer survivors who delayed chemotherapy, threatening their own lives so they could undergo fertility treatment and store those eggs. Today, they shared their loss. I'm a woman wounded, robbed by cancer of my health and the body that I once knew, and robbed by university hospitals of my future. The clinic has revealed that more than 4,000 eggs and embryos were lost when a storage tank malfunctioned. Moving on now next to that new mysterious cl clues in that mysterious crash along California's scenic Highway 1. A family of eight, including six children, believed to have been lost when their SUV went off the road and crashed. Tonight, a preliminary investigation suggesting it may not have been an accident after all. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth. Tonight, police say a family's fatal plunge off this scenic stretch of California coast appears to have been intentional. Jennifer and Sarah Hart died in a crash last week along with their six adopted children. Three of those children never found, believed to be swept out to sea. Nobody wants to get to the bottom of this more than the guy you're looking at right now. Why did this happen? How did this happen? Investigators now say evidence recovered from the car indicates their SUV stopped at this gravel patch before accelerating and driving off the cliff. The car speedometer found stuck at 90 miles an hour on the rocks 100 feet below. Neighbors back in Oregon had recently called Child Protective Services after one of the children told them his parents were punishing them by withholding food. One of the parents convicted of domestic assault in 2010. You know, there's a lot of people online saying that they were beautiful people, and I, at, at some time they may have been, but that is not what we saw next door. And just days before the tragedy, Child Services had tried to make contact with the family, but they had already vanished. Tom, police saying they haven't found a suicide note. They're currently searching the couple's computer and iPad, and they're awaiting toxicology reports on all victims. Tom? An awful situation all around. All right, Kana, thank you. And there's still much more ahead on World News Tonight this Monday. The